catastrophize. We thought that was the best sort of analogy she could relate to was if I had been undamaged. I don't usually get phone calls at 5 o'clock in the morning, so naturally my heart started racing, and I could see the call was from Stockholm. Uh, and so I think at that point, I, I almost had an out-of-body type of experience. I can't honestly tell you specifically the words they used, other than it was our, with our great pleasure to tell you that you've won the Nobel Prize. And, physiology and uh, medicine and you know from that point onward I think I was just overwhelmed with a sense of the moment a sense of great appreciation uh, for the, the, the life I've been able to lead in science and for now the opportunity to share this wonderful recognition with the many people who have helped me so much uh, in my life yeah, no, today was the day. Uh, so I'm so happy to be able to share this with oxygen you. is fundamental to life on the planet as we know it. And as a result, every multicellular animal on the planet has had to deal with oxygen and how to know whether it's getting enough oxygen or not and to respond appropriately. And what we discovered was a molecular pathway or a molecular circuit that all multicellular organisms use. So this is something that's highly conserved throughout evolution that allows cells and tissues to know whether they're getting enough oxygen and to respond uh, accordingly. So it's a sort of like a thermostat, if you will. Cells have to adjust. If they're getting too much oxygen or too little oxygen, they have to adjust themselves so that they can tolerate that environment. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, thank you. Uh... So it turns out, again, because oxygen is fundamental to life, it perhaps won't be surprising that there are many diseases that are characterized by either inadequate oxygen delivery and here I'm thinking about diseases such as anemia or heart attack or stroke or, or for that matter, many solid tumors. And so one thing this has enabled us to do is with the circuit in hand to develop drugs that will either activate or inactivate this particular molecular circuit. So for example, in diseases like anemia, there are now drugs that are starting to be approved that trick the body into thinking it's not getting enough oxygen and as a result, the body makes its own red blood cells. And we're also hopeful that in time such drugs might be useful for diseases like heart attack and stroke where again part of the problem is there's not enough oxygen being delivered to the tissues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah. okay. So, we'll do, so we'll go back to the front, the back AP's back in the front row. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. On the other hand we now know that this molecular pathway is co-opted by certain cancers and in those cancers we'd like to be able to turn the pathway off. And we now have some new drugs that either directly or indirectly inactivate this pathway, some of which have already been approved for the treatment of kidney cancer and some of which are being tested for kidney cancers as well as a variety of other cancers.